From Corolla One Studios in Glendale, California, this is the Adam Corolla Show. Adam's guest today, Jim Jeffries. Plus, we'll take your phone calls and go over some of the latest news. And now, still hard over the Fast X trailer. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. No choice but on mandate. Get it on and welcome to the show. One of our favorite comedians, Jim Jeffries, Hi. is in the studio. Thanks for having me. I appreciate Chris it. Max Pat as well. I uh, saw the special last night on Netflix, High and Dry. Very funny. Oh, thanks. Um, man, top of your game, I, w- I would say. Uh, I, I, look, I, I've, I've done sort of like eight specials in the last 15 years, but this one I had three years because of covid to write it and i think it showed a little bit i i feel like the writing was a little better in this one it was great yeah i oh, thank you i appreciate where'd it. you film it uh, i filmed it in toronto originally i wanted to call it hawaii and i just i had an hawaiian shirt that i thought i looked good in <laughs> and i wanted to just to have like palm trees and stuff in the background and call jim jeffrey's hawaii live from, from toronto mm-hmm. and that would be the whole gag you know what I mean? but netflix said in their algorithm they didn't think that would work or something they uh they kiboshed that a bit the um <laughs> It was funny. So you start off talking about koalas and what pieces of shit they were and then just sit around and eat all day and they sleep 22 hours out of the day. I, is hours. that true? That is. They sleep 22 hours out of the day. 80% of them have chlamydia and uh, they're all high. The, the, the eucalyptus leaf has the same chemical effect that THC has on us and it's their only source of food and water. So they're, they're perpetually stoned. Yeah, they look it, like they're high. It's, yeah. <laughs> they really do. And it, But it's, it's really interesting how... Our culture works, and when I, I don't mean our culture in the United States, but I just mean around the world, Societal. which is this creature, this useless creature, this yeah. lethargic, useless creature that's riddled with STDs and does nothing. <laughs> does nothing. We've decided to worship at the altar of this thing because their fur is a certain pattern and their it's, ears look a certain cute. way they're and they like, have a little schnoz like a, on them. A hot, hot high-maintenance girlfriend. It's like you keep on. The only reason they die in the fires is because they're fucking asleep. Right, you know what I mean. Oh, all the, the other Australian animals are running fires, away yeah. and all that type of stuff. But like, as soon as as soon as the fires break out in Australia, all we hear in the American media is uh, how how the ko- koala population's doing. <laughs> right, we don't give a fuck about the wombats. They don't get any. We don't coverage. even care about the indigenous people. No, like, we no, care no. much more about koalas because they're cute. They that, are. They that, are adorable. That's all. And if you think about it, and I never thought about it, but here goes. We hate rats and we hate mice. You know, it's vermin. If you live in an apartment with mice and rats, you have to call a guy. Look, if you live in an apartment and found a couple koalas, you wouldn't call a guy. No, It'd you'd... be the best day of your life. You'd right. be like, I got koalas in this <laughs> apartment. Over. But you see a rat or a mouse, you have to call the exterminator because yeah. you have to kill it. We get so much use out of mice and rats because every experiment is a mouse mouse or a rat. rat. The rats we use for all the social stuff, like when we take the rats, you put them in an environment, you know, or you feed them cocaine. Here's what they do. Like we learn, we've learned so much from rats. Mice were growing a third ear on them because we use the shit out of mice and rats. We have no regard for them. No. We use them in the lab. Once they leave the lab, we want them poisoned and killed. Koalas we worship. They hate us. And we, they do nothing. We could test on chlamydia medication on them. They've got the chlamydia. Uh, that's they're, right. They're, they're, they're ready to go. Also, the thing, it's it's like plants, right? So a rose, you have to put manure on it and this and make it grow and, and nurture it. And if a plant goes through quickly, we deem it to be a weed. Yes. You know what I mean? It's, it's just an overachieving plant. It really is. <laughs> it's a plant that is capable of growing in the middle of a sidewalk. Yeah, in the middle of anywhere. Like and we literally go, kill can it, push kill through. It. <laughs> it, 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 is, it is really a pl- – the, the weed has more moxie than mm. any other plant. Like you hope your son has half the moxie a, weed, a weed has yeah. because a weed will grow anywhere. It needs no tending to. You don't have to water it. You don't have to do anything. We plant all these plants by the side of the freeway in California. Yeah. Then it rains for, for a week. And then a week goes by, and there's a bunch of four-foot-high weeds, and whatever it is we planted isn't even begun to grow. But yet we hate the weed. Yeah. Why? Because it's we aesthetic. Don't, we don't like overachievers, man. Yeah, if we you, should strive to be the weed. If you took a... You know, if you took seeds from a rose and sprinkled them all over a sidewalk, 
they would never find any purchase. No, no, there no, would be no, no roses no, no, there. No, 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 there's no roses growing in the desert. I'm sure there's some poem about well, it. Well, but... it was it was fun. <laughs> it was funny. I'm sure you two wrote a song about it. <laughs> <laughs> so here's uh, here's my eucalyptus uh, Jim Jeffries koala tie-in. Right. We were talking about a story last week where I think a woodpecker had stored a million acorns in the yeah. wall of a Seven, house. 700 pounds of acorns. Right. And then I was saying- He's a hoarder. Hoarder yeah. squirrel. I was saying the acorn is like the bitterest, weirdest thing you know ever. Who could eat that? But well, what creature could eat it? But I wasn't picturing an acorn. I was picturing something from my youth when I would walk around- in uh, Silver Lake, I went to a hippie school over there, and we'd find these. Now, these are like an acorn, but they come from a eucalyptus tree. And they're weird smelling, they're bitter, and I don't think anyone can eat them. But I was walking through my neighborhood <laughs> the other day, and I was going, why was I picturing, I just threw it on the ground. But, Acorns are bigger though, aren't they? Yes, I, I was I was picturing this thing. It's this little thing that comes from eucalyptus trees, and I think they still call it an acorn, but now they have to figure it out. But I, I don't know if koalas, they just eat the leaves, I, right? I, they just eat the leaves, and they're particular about the leaves as well. There's yeah. like certain leaves they won't eat and certain leaves they will. They're like, you know, like pandas and fucking bamboo, right? Right. Um, but I saw my first squirrel when I was 23 years old. I'd never seen a squirrel. <laughs> There's no squirrels in Australia, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And I've only ever seen them animated. You know, no one ever puts them in a movie just as a regular squirrel. It's always right. it's Chip and Dale, or right. what, you know right. what I mean. And uh, so, so I was coming back from a, from a night out, coming down off drugs, ecstasy, probably around that age. Mm-hmm. And I was walking through a park, and there was kids with their families walking to school, and I saw a squirrel just come down with like a nut in its hand, and just like mm-hmm. that. And I just <laughs> couldn't believe it. <laughs> I was like, I was like. It's a squirrel. And I stood there and then I waved over the children thinking they were rare. <laughs> right. I was like, kids, kids, come here. It's a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> and the parents kept on rushing the kids along. And I went back and told like my English housemate. I said, I saw a squirrel today. And they went, yeah, they're fucking everywhere, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I have thoughts on squirrels. Uh, one is I've never seen a squirrel shit mm. and I've never come upon squirrel shit. Dog shit, pretty ubiquitous. Horse shit, dog shit. See was, it? Dog shit was more around in our youth. I remember stepping in dog shit on the regular, but since people yes. have been picking it up, yes, it's no. It, my son's never stepped in dog shit, and he doesn't. I know spent. The pain of, my, I spent my entire formative years trying to get shit yeah. off my foot. I we used to have we, we go barefoot we used to a have, lot, and there's dog shit we used everywhere. To have grates at the front of the classroom. These steel grates <laughs> that were bent up that would just scrape dog shit off your shoes before you came into class. Like, how far along were we in the hole? Maybe we could just pick it up. I, you know, <laughs> that's a very good thought because you're right. I would go to the park yeah. and we would play pickup football games and inevitably we'd be barefoot, just run around the grass. And I would step in dog shit all the time. And I would step in it with your shoes on it as well. Barefoot's the worst shoes. But there was no concept of picking up your dog shit. No. And, and the first time I saw it, I remember going, fuck, that's weird. <laughs> yeah. Like like it was degrading for the person. Now it's completely normal. Yeah, but the first the time, the first, there was like, I remember there was there was ladies walking around town and we, and we were like, there's dog shit in their purses. <laughs> right. And just it blew our mind. Yeah. I'll tell you what about squirrels. Without the tails, they're fucking nothing. Yeah, yeah. they're nothing. Well, I heard they're, they're just as disease-ridden as rats. They're, they're just, just a rat. as gross. It's, yeah. it's my theory on hair. Like, I've had to take Propecia and transplants, and I just keep my hair looking this shit, right? Hair Without hair, no love, right? You take the hair off a koala. Oh, it's oh nothing. that's well, you, you would, nothing. You wouldn't feed it. Burn victim. Yeah, you would. <laughs> you, you'd leave it on the rock. You think that thing's in pain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and take this, the tail off the squirrel. It's just a rat. Yeah. Hair means love. No, you're right. The squirrel <laughs> and the koala get get a lot of love. And then the rat and the mice, we don't no. do, ex- they never hear stories like, uh, we have new data from experimenting on squirrels. Yeah. And we found out that this cancer drug is harmful to the squirrel's liver. Like, you, we don't use squirrels. They just, they're a well, nuisance. There's a, there's a lot of squirrel racism in the UK because they have the indigenous uh, red squirrel, which is to Britain. And that one's dying out because the American gray squirrel 
has come over and has taken over. Yeah, and so so there's a lot of American uh, prejudice going on about the grey squirrels. You'll hear it out of British people, fucking American squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> but if you ever, you know, it's weird the British because they call women birds. Yeah, birds. So I, the I, same I call, guys I like fucking birds. bird over there and fucking squirrel like you. You must think they're talking I, about I a got, dude or I, something. So, so back when I was smoking, like, so cigarettes um, in Britain are called fags. We right. all, we've all used, right. heard this term. So I use the term get a pack of fags or, or whatever. And then in America, you say bum a cigarette. Mm-hmm. Right. And bumming in Britain means anal sex. To bum oh. someone is is like a flank term. And I lived in both cultures and I did ask someone to bum a fag. Like it, it, <laughs> went, to, it went to that level. I had too much crossover. <laughs> So have you ever seen a squirrel shit and have you ever stepped or come across squirrel shit? I, I get, I, I've had a million birds shit on my car. Yeah. And I, the squirrels are all up in the trees running around too where your car's parked. I've never had right. one shit above, but I assume those little pebbly shits on the golf course, they're probably squirrel, squirrel, shit. squirrel shit. I assume it could be another. They could be rabbit shit as well. I had this concept that they never shit. And that's why at some point when you're driving down the street, you see them just dart out under right. your car, like, take me. Like, I haven't shit in four years. <laughs> just run me over. Because they are the only creature that actively tries to get run over. Other creatures get run over, right. but they don't run out literally. Like, I'll see a squirrel on the sidewalk, and I'll be going down my side street, and I'll have eye contact with it, like, oh, come on now, and it'll just go running out, right, yeah. as my they car's coming out. They go out of their way. Car, yeah. Goats get run over, and no dogs chance. get run over, but they don't hustle <laughs> to get run over. Kangaroos do that. Oh, do they? Yeah, kangaroos will just jump out in front of your car. They're a pain in the neck. That's a mess. Yeah, oh, yeah that'll fuck a car up. Yeah, 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 yeah. A big, a big red will definitely fuck. Like a big red's like six foot tall. Like, Jeez. like different breeds of dogs. There's lots of different kangaroos. You know? Kangaroos mm-hmm. have a good PR team over here too, because we yeah. think they're very cute. But I know that they're. Well, they're I just, ditch, I was right? just in Australia. I ate some the other day, and that was like I was on set, and it was part of the 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 craft services. It was kangaroo. kangaroo, kangaroo, kangaroo fillets? One of the leanest red meats you can eat. All that jumping, man. Really? They got no oh. fat on them. Yeah, <laughs> How's it taste? It's it's a it's more gamey than say lamb or beef, but it's a kangaroo fillet. It's a lovely cut of meat, and and we've got. Don't feel bad about it. We got they cull kangaroos in parts of Australia because they're fucking up the farmland. There's loads of them. They're not endangered in any way. It's not like eating koala where you'd feel some guilt. <laughs> But there you go. Some we shouldn't feel some guilt. No. They're they're worthless. Well, and yeah, they're high. But, but they're endangered. It's the endangered does <laughs> oh, a lot of heavy lifting. <laughs> you know the, the koala too. The, the koala is the only one I don't feel bad about seeing in the zoo. Mm. Other animals, I go, well, I probably want to run around that. It's probably a bit stuck. But that koala that just put on a twig with a few leaves, right. like it's just sat in there. It's not fucking going anywhere. It sleeps right. for 22 hours a day. Zoo them up. It may not even know it's in a zoo. They're not yearning for the outside. No. <laughs> the koala and the panda especially, I got thoughts on pandas. Yeah, I got loads of thoughts on pandas. First <laughs> off. Picky eaters. Oh, yeah. Okay, this is a good point. <laughs> All the other animals come to the zoo and then we feed them some version of what they ate in the wild. Yeah. You know, we bring lions in, but we don't feed them slaughtered gazelles. No. We just feed them some lion meal or some beef or, or something. Yeah. Some Raw meat. Yeah. Something. We feed it. We feed everything, you know, same with the aquarium. You know, we just basically feed them a version of what they might be eating in the wild. The panda gets exactly what it. We didn't wean them off of bamboo. No. Well, they're not on bamboo meal. There's no koala food. Not only are they on bamboo, they only eat or like 10 panda per, food. 10% of the bamboo out there. The rest of it they don't want. It's a very particular type of pan, um, bamboo that they eat. I think the panda, couple of thoughts. You they, got don't, thoughts? they don't fuck each other either. Well, I got many thoughts. <laughs> they they got to oh, fuck yeah. each other. They're not going to reproduce. That's not our problem. They're, they're picking all the I senses. got thoughts on that. The panda has two things going for it in terms of why Americans love it so much. Right. The fur, yeah. the aforementioned fur yeah. with the black patch on back the eye. Back in the day, you could watch them on a black and white TV and it was still the same experience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. My old Zenith would have been fine with a panda. We should have referred to black and whites as panda sets. Yeah. <laughs> then then, then oh. when I said to my dad, can we get rid of the black and white 13-inch Zenith and you want to throw the panda out? Come on now, boy. So... um. They have the fur, yeah. which works well, and they sit. 
they sit like a child sits. They sit like Buddha. Yeah, they, yeah, sit, they sit on their butt with their feet out, and we love their sitting. Everything else lays on their side. They sit, and we're in love with them sitting, and we'll watch them just sit and eat because their fur is beautiful, and they sit like a four-year-old sits on a kitchen floor. They're also the only animals in the zoo that we seem to know the names of. You know, right. you go see the bear, it's the bear, and you go see the tiger, and the tiger, and then you see the pandas. That one's Ling Ling. That's right. <laughs> yes. been told whatever the name is. More yeah, thoughts. Signed a name. <laughs> I got more thoughts on that. Okay. <laughs> Can we... We... If anyone who's listening to me has probably heard a lot of shit before, but I haven't talked about it in a long time. We don't buy our pandas, or we try to mate them, but we lease our pandas from China. Yeah. China is a rogue nation. It's got prison camps and it's flying balloons over over our missile silos. We should not be leasing pets from them. No. We should take the fucking panda and once we got it, we go, fuck it. Now it's, come get it, yeah. bitch. It's in our zoo. Go down to San Diego and go get the fucking panda if you dare. Hostage, <laughs> hostage the pandas. Take yeah. the fucking, well, look. And will history look at us badly for having pandas from China if there's a cold well, war let's or something put like it, that? Let's put it this way. If, if we gave them a Kodiak bear or if Canada gave them a moose, oh, yeah. do you think they'd be leasing it from us? <laughs> or the second they got it, they'd go, fuck I, off. I don't, think, we're we, keeping I don't the moose. think you guys lease the koalas. We just give you one, don't we? Well, that's a good question. I don't know if the Australians Ben's lease it. Ben's look think, into it. So yeah. we lease the pandas. Yeah. You know what else comes along with the lease? What? They get to name them. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We don't it. If I, first thing I would do if I ran a zoo would be like we're taking the fucking panda bear Give him American name and his like name Tommy. is Jake. Yeah, yeah well, Chad, fuck off. Chad, we're not going with Leland. Frank and Chad. Yeah, you guys yeah. are rogue nation. We're our biggest foe. You're fucking. Ho- you're horrible to your people. You're thinking about the invading Taiwan. We're not going to honor this lease. You're yeah. you're flying balloons. We're flying balloons okay, over our country. The, we're not the, honoring the lease. With the balloons, I'm not worried about China anymore. I, I feel like balloons are the lowest level of spy equipment you can have. Like, yeah. shouldn't you have, like, a stealth bomber coming? Like, it was taking photos for, like, seven days or something. <laughs> for five or six days it was up there. Take it, And it's a balloon. It's not very good at spying. I've never seen James Bond get in a balloon and dun, 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 dun. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it feels like the, the technology's not up there. I'm not worried. All their weapons in China, right, are made in China. Oh, they're, that's a good re- they're, point. Re- they're renowned for making shit. They are. So I'm not too worried. But they steal our technology. Oh. This is one more reason we keep those pandas. Yeah, all right. All right. More thoughts on pandas. <laughs> all right. A, all right, Ben, you got to look into it. But we lease them. They give us a list of names we can name them. We uh, Again, if Canada gave them a moose. Trudeau wouldn't say you have to name it Jacques or Pierre or something. <laughs> He'd just go, here's your moose. Yeah. Enjoy it. And then they would give it a Chinese name. Well, part of the joy of them giving the name is is so that some dickhead at the, the zoo doesn't name it an Asian name and sound right. Because if, if we named them Ping Pong and Ling Ling, right. we'd go, oh, that sounds a bit racist. Right. You know what I mean? Do that. At least they've done it for us. <laughs> also, they're the only creature that won't fuck. They're the only creature on the planet that won't reproduce. We lease them at great expense and we put them together, male and female, and then we try to entice them to fuck. You don't have to entice a dog. A dog will fuck a throw pillow. A dog will fuck the Avon lady's leg. You put any animal, including humans, in a cage for months on end, they'll fuck each other. Right. Always. They won't fuck. So we lease them, but we can't get a cub because they won't fuck. And I don't know if you guys know this, but we actually created panda porn. Yeah, to get him in the mood. To try to entice them. And what is that, bamboo-based, or is it pictures of... <laughs> Being violated with a yeah. bamboo shoot. <laughs> no, and I always had, I was at this fantasy that we would show the pandas the porn because they don't want to fuck. Have we really? Is that, is that what... It, yeah. is, it, is it other yeah. pandas fucking? Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure Ben can look do that one Do other animals too. get aroused when they see other animals fuck? I guess they do. I guess, why, why wouldn't they? I guess that you're watching yeah. sex. It's the same as humans. I guess you, that's what would happen. Some guidance. Sure. I always had this joke where I thought 
they're showing them the panda porn and all the zoologists are in the re- viewing room yeah, with yeah. the one way mirror, you know, watching them through the glass, you know, and uh, the panda's looking at the porn and it's getting horny and it pulls up behind the female panda and inserts and oh, starts working happy. it from behind and everyone's like cheering and like this is this is great and at the very end the panda just pulls out and comes all over the back of the female <laughs> and then looks at the yeah. two-way glass and goes suck it bitch <laughs> <laughs> i believe a panda would do that yeah yeah and they've probably been programmed by china to do I, that, to they, come on the back. They must be. And they may be spies. They must be inbred because there's not many of them, right? So I, I, I play the Mirage, must and the, the Mirage has that, that zoo left over from Siegfried and Roy at the back, and there's just like a whole lot of white tigers that are just uh-huh. sitting there, and they're all inbred, aren't they? I guess. Well, the albino ones are to keep the yeah the, the, thing, the bloodline pure. going. Yeah. But I, I don't know. You wouldn't do a DNA check. You wouldn't do twenty three and Me on a panda to see how far back it goes. No, we just turns out all your family I, I comes would, from China. I would argue as well that this country probably invests more resources into pandas than we do to inner city kids. Yes, I think we do. Uh, panda diplomacy in its current form says that China loans pandas to a zoo in the U.S. or another country. The zoo pays an annual fee, 500000 to $1 million each. What? The rogue nation. A, a year? And you know where that, yes, Jim, you know panda. where that money goes? Right yeah, into right. balloons. Yeah, right. <laughs> right balloon right technology. Yeah, that balloon said you paid for That's it. That's right. And then China doesn't necessarily pick the names, but they do get final approval. They get oh, final approval. Well, they're not going to approve I Phil didn't know or it was Jake. A, a million bucks in them? Yeah, back. they would not. Well, <laughs> see, they would not. There has to be a Chinese word for Jake. The name itself has to be in Chinese, uh, but it can mean. Uh, but why does it have to be in Chinese for? I, because they're because a they're rogue China, nation, and we got to get tough on them. And this is probably just a little test balloon for us. They're like, if these fucking what round eye think, devils are dumb enough what do you to, think buy, the, to lease pandas from us, and then we'll give them the name, we can do anything to them. What do you think the balloon was doing then? I, was it just shit stirring? Because it feels like it wasn't getting many shots or anything. Like, I I think I think these nations. Try shit just to see how we see react. See how far yeah. they can go. Right. And 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 when we don't react or we react in a sort of lackluster way, they go, all right, we Should know we we're Should we shut it down with. right away? Or what I, I, look, <laughs> there's a clip of Biden going, uh, well, we didn't want to shoot it down over Montana because it could have landed on a school. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, uh, probably less than a 50% chance of that job. <laughs> Montana's a pretty big place. Yeah. Kevin Costner yeah. and four other celebrities live there. And the fact that it might land on a school, that's mm, specifically... That's precise. Uh, that seems very, very precise. But it could have landed on people. It could have landed on that's people. That's what he was worried about. Is there that. no way you can set up a sort of big net underneath it with four helicopters or something? I don't know. There must be some... Is that is that stupid? Yeah, Fast and Furious I, is doing that in the next movie. So. Like Fast the, and Furious would have caught it all day. <laughs> I think we're good enough now. We should be good enough to go once it goes over this mountain range in Montana where nobody exists. Um, we'll shoot it down over the mountain range right. or some some version of that. So and they was, named the pandas. The Hold of, on, I'm not done with the what pandas. What was it at the bottom of the balloon? Was it a? Did they have a basket? Was it one of those wicker baskets? <laughs> yeah, it was. Was, was, it, was, it, was, it just, was it just a? Ca- was it? Was it a GoPro? What was it? Like I, it was meant to be a camera. They're not yeah, telling us. They're not telling us. We, we got to. We got to see that. Yeah, what, what there was. was there there were the, the debris. There were parts on it that said "Made in America." That's what I heard as well. So they steal our technology, and we lease their pandas. Does that? Does that seem like a great relationship? Is that a winning relationship so with a rogue what's nation? The, what's, you steal our technology and we pay you for your bear? What do we do with China then? What do we do? We stop paying them for the pandas. Yeah, we, start, the pandas is step start one. Starting tomorrow. That's step one. Well, that's yeah. message sent. Yeah, yeah, This yeah. fucking honeymoon is over, bitch. We take Ling Ling, film a hostage video. Right. Come. <laughs> you want your panda? Come get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll scramble those F-22s. You send a balloon over to get the panda. We have uh, an example of panda porn. Oh, oh, wait. Oh. <laughs> Hold on, Dawson. You have to keep looking here. Oh, I mean, those, I want to watch those, the panda porn. Don't get me wrong. Those pandas need a wash. I always remember being a bit more white than that. Those ones have been rolling around yeah. the dirt all day. How do they clean sure. themselves? Do we clean them? There's a lot of questions. Oh, I'm sure we pamper the shit out of those pandas. But hold on a second with the panda porn. Hold on. I think 
Also, if there are any panda offspring, I think China owns them. I think well, we not American their because shed. they were born in the country. They come over here. Well, what about the dreamers? They come over here, yeah. they swim the Rio Grande, they shit out a kid, and the kid's an American. Yes, that's not listed here, but yes, that is true. They well, should it be the same for the dreamers it is for the pandas? There you go. Or that panda Bullshit. should be an American citizen. Yeah. That panda I, I'd be, I'd be, is ours. I'd be okay with dual citizenship. It won't know the language. It's been living out here, unless it's been talking to the other pandas. Yeah. I would say <laughs> the Chinese, look, uh, we'll lease you your million-dollar-year panda, name them whatever the fuck you want, but if they shit out a kid, that's ours. We own it. Yeah, all right. Yeah, that's And I'd enough. vote for any politician who got and, onto that And platform. then if you got enough kids, you could get rid of the old pandas would die out. You'd save all that money. You'd have your own panda population. That's right. Or just send back the, the dry old pandas. We it's, don't need them. It's like how in uh, Colombia where, uh, what's his name? Uh, who is the drug guy there? Um, Narcos fella. Pablo Escobar. Escobar, Escobar yeah. had a zoo. Right, he had a great big zoo down there just for him and his local villagers to come and check out the zoo. After he gets caught and everything, the the feds just cracked open the gates and opened the zoo. And now down there, they have the second highest population outside of Africa of hippos. All really? Through, yeah, all through the rivers and all that type of stuff. And and hippos kill more people than anyone. They've got a huge dangerous. hippo population because of Pablo Escobar. <laughs> we have hippos here. Do we have to name them African names and are we leasing them from Africa? I don't think so. I've not heard about any hippo lease. I don't think we have this relationship with other countries. Is there any other animal that has a lease? (laughs) Because I don't reckon we get a million dollars for for koala. I reckon we're good for 100 grand, 100 grand a koala. (laughs) Yeah, Jim's undercutting the market right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, you get rid of your pandas. I'll, each panda, I'll get you five koalas. <laughs> Good question. We'll look into that. But uh, regarding your question, Ace, about uh, being able to name a panda Jake, back yeah. in 2009, San Diego Zoo had a baby panda. They had to name it. And they let the public uh, put out some names. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the names, the, the one of the most popular ones was Bob. <laughs> I was rejected by the Chinese. See? That's a good name. Fuck off. Uh, other non-starters were Ron Burgundy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, San Diego, Ron Burgundy. Keeping it and, classy. Uh, this one I really like. I don't know why it got uh, taken out because it sounds Chinese. Zuzu. Yeah, it's in the zoo. Yeah. They didn't like that. They didn't like Zuzu. But do, do they not like it or they not like us? That's that's what I'm saying. And we're so worried about every culture but our own. We would We would happily... We would happily comply with them. If, 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 they, if we dropped off, I don't know, a California bear or something to China, we'd let them name it whatever the fuck they want. I, we wouldn't, I don't, I, we I, this might be bigger than me, but I don't reckon that, that uh, Chinese zoos would be very nice. I reckon they'd be a bit shit. They'd be clean. You reckon? I, reckon, I think so. No, in Asia, they. I've been around. I just toured Asia. Everywhere you go, there they're, they're fucking with animals, man. They drug the animals. Yeah, I saw this fish that <laughs> was like this, like in a in a wet market I or fight. something like that. Right, yeah. it was a great big like tuna type of thing, and they were just kept on pouring water on it to keep it alive. But they were cutting fillets out of it, oh. and, they got, and the guy, the oh. thing was still flapping oh. with half of its body oh. gone, gone, and they were like very fresh. And I'm like, can I have the bit that's not so fresh? I'll be right. I don't need it. Pam Anderson would not approve. Oh, no, no, no. My wife's vegan. I was like, I didn't even tell her about it. Do we, like, uh, all right, we got panda porn here. This is what they play, the pandas? Yeah. One sniffing the other side. Well, is it, they look like pretty. Mounting now, getting up uh, backside and mounting up the, mounting them up. Now the dude panda, I guess, is out on the prowl and. Okay. Yeah, there we oh, go. Wow. There we go. They don't look that much different than me when I'm drunk. Do they have that '70s music <laughs> playing in the background, or or, is it, or do we have to have Chinese yeah. music? Yeah, they're just, oh, just yeah. pulling he's, and he's tugging doing... and sitting and oh, humping. The, yeah, yeah. Their little their little tail pops back and forth. It's adorable. These, yeah. Oh, the bamboo's getting involved now. Yeah. I know. He's trying to push him towards the other panda. Go back and fuck the panda. There we go. I'm oh, leaving the tail up so that the the, the, the pussy the pussy has a bit of scent to it, so the uh, panda can get in there. All right, get your little rocket out. There he goes. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> So we show our loveless pandas this video, and it's supposed to put them in the mood. So there is panda porn. 
But the video, it, it shows guys with sticks pushing them towards. I don't, yeah, it's, smell her a bit. Get your pheromones yeah. on there. Yeah, having the, the guys involved is kind of a weird choice. Jim. Well, I, I never knew we had the least pandas. I never. I thought we just owned them. Mm. No. And when do they? When do they take them back? Do they ever take them back? Or they just well, keep getting the money? Well, first things first. It, w- w- this has to take place times a hundred around the United States. How many, you, reckon, you, reckon a, you reckon there's a hundred pandas? Well, there's probably. I reckon there's ten. There's probably. There's probably. I don't know. 21 major zoos in the United States or something. Yeah, you but know? they don't like pandas. Pandas are a big thing. They, they, they loan oh, two pandas. Oh, all of a sudden you're an expert on pandas? When I you was, know shit about when pandas I was when you kid, came in this room. When I was a kid, they, <laughs> now they, he's the they world's leading two, most they, authority on they pandas. They loan two pandas to the <laughs> Tarongo Zoo, Tarongo, which is the Sydney Zoo, which is like San Diego and the Sydney Zoo are regarded as the two best mm-hmm. zoos in the world, right? And they loan us to Sydney uh, and in San, San Diego. Diego. Okay, and uh, and and we all lost our shit. There was lines for hours to go see these pandas. We never. We, they were the only two pandas we ever had in Australia. They might have more since, but when I was a kid, that was the first two and the only two. Well, we're you- a big enough nation. I think that you would have five times more. I reckon. Okay, I, I'm going to say there's 28 pandas in America. How many pandas have we got? Giant pandas currently live at the National Zoo in Washington D.C. Zoo Atlanta. Zoo Atlanta in Atlanta. The San Diego Zoo. Six. And the Memphis Zoo. Eight. The total in Probably September more. 2013 was 12. I'm going to see if I can find uh, some yeah, recent. 12 million a that's, year. Well, that's still, still not cash that could have gone to the yeah, kids in the inner city. <laughs> we're the suckers in this deal. China's like, yeah, we're going to send them our pandas. They're going to pay. They're going to take care of them. They're going to have you know, what, How the fuck has Memphis become the panda capital of the South or whatever? Like, where, where, <laughs> yeah. where, what did it, like you think Atlanta Zoo or something like that? Is Memphis renowned? Yeah, Memphis for the, got the call. Yeah, Memphis. I Hey, Memphis is on the rise. You go there for Gracelands and pandas. <laughs> now, what? two things. Jim, be honest. Let's just say you were in the room, the viewing room, yeah. and um, you were showing the panda porn. Yeah. And you're hoping the pandas would fuck, and you're like... Are you asking if I'd have a wank? I'm just saying, what if you're in that room, and you turn to the side, and you saw one a guy had a boner? I, would you say that I, guy loves the shit out of pandas and we need more guys like him? No, I would reassign him to another animal. <laughs> <laughs> you would. I'd keep on showing him different animal porn until eventually yeah. the erection went away and went, ah, okay, no, no, he's not, not into gazelles. By that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, 10 pandas in the U.S., Jim. 12, Dwight. 12. Well, uh, just oh, 10 on my screen now. now. Two died since we got our, last, oh, our no. last figure in. Sorry, China. All right, but now... It sounds like more because they're always named twice. They're going... <laughs> ling, ling. They're going worldwide with this shit. And they're going to Australia. Oh, yeah. They're going to Europe, probably. Yeah. They're going to other continents and countries. I bet this is a $100 million a year racket for that rogue regime called China. Oh, worldwide, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, what would they do with 100 pandas if they had them? Like, they're not exotic in China. No yeah. one's going to go to this. It's like you seeing a squirrel or me seeing a koala. Like, right. I've seen the pandas. Mm. It's old news over there. All I, right. I always think with, like, for, okay, so I was, I was talking to a friend the other day and he was getting on about how like when, during the World Cup they were going on like c- culturally we're all different right so so you got the World Cup in Qatar and they use slave labour to do that and people were really angry about it and I'm not for it either but how is that different than the pyramids mm. that we all flock to to see no one's ever gone don't see the pyramids I hear they use slave labour yeah <laughs> Well, we're, we're, we have an interesting uh, yeah, yeah. boycott. Some, some people might have died uh, building that. Instead, we not, go like this. Who knows how they built it? No groups trying to tear down the pyramids. <laughs> yeah, they're not trying to cancel the pyramids. Yeah, yeah. Cancel the pyramids, man. It's, it's slave labor at its best. The pharaoh statues. We have, a, our, we, have, we're, we have an interesting relationship with slavery because we, we do go back to slavery times in this country, but then we stop. We don't really go back further into the Egyptian days or many other. No, I we, mean, every we, culture had we, slaves. We stop at the most recent slaves. We yeah. stop at the most recent one. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's how you do that's slavery. All, that's all you can do. And if new slaves come along, then we'll stop at them. But what about reparations for Jews who built the pyramids? Oh, how do you know it was Jews? <laughs> well, no that's one my knows. Question that, no about one modern no, day. No one knows how they were made. A lot of people think aliens, not me personally. <laughs> I think it was Jews, but. <laughs> Give some alien love. I'm just saying, Egypt 
if you know someone who's an Egyptian Jew and can prove that his great, 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 great ancestors built the pyramid, maybe you should give him a how little do you, love. How do you think they built it? I think just a lot of people lifting rocks. That's I think, my yeah. theory. I, a lot of people do like they, they, they're they trying made to build hills a cube and they step and back. And there's a thing. And I just think I, I heavy, think they, strong people lifting. I think I saw a story about this once. Maybe I, logs underneath. I it. think they did mounds of dirt that just kept rising around it and they would just keep dragging them up. They couldn't lift it. You know, they couldn't put the top one on by just dragging it up the side of the pyramid. They keep building this ever growing mound of dirt. Like kind of like when you see a construction site in the city and they're going down eight stories and there's that kind of dirt road or mine or something, that kind of dirt road that just progressively goes up and up and up. The theory is that's how they got the stuff up, and then when they were done, they got rid of the dirt, obviously. Here's something about mining, right? So I got married. I gave my wife an engagement ring, as you do, and she wanted a stone that wasn't a blood diamond and blah, 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 right? So I I found her a diamond from Canada, of all places. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, so so why – if diamonds last forever and they're the strongest material on earth, why aren't they going down in value? And why do women always want a new one? They had, the theory is the De Beers cartel. But why do women yeah. need a new one? They last forever. Just get, well, we'll buy, I'll buy a secondhand one and you can put it in a new setting. They always want a brand new diamond for a thing that lasts forever. These things should be worthless they, because they never break down. <laughs> all right. Women, well, here's how women work. Okay I've, been, <laughs> okay. I've been wanting this question answered for years. Yeah. Here's how they work. If you brought them roses yeah. that lasted forever, mm. They would still want a new bouquet of roses for Valentine's, for their birthday, for whatever the holiday was or whatever the celebration was. They would still demand a new set because you have to renew your vow of love. You have, you have to prove it. Yeah. I, you know, I mean, I'll give you a perfect example of the difference between like men and women. Okay. We're pragmatic. We're practical. Mm-hmm. If, if I said to a woman... I would like a cordless drill for my for my birthday. Yeah. If she produced a cordless drill for me on my birthday, I would be happy. That's all. Sure. And if I said, where did you get the cordless drill? And she said, I stole it from the retarded kid next door. I'd go, uh, thank you even more. Yeah. He could have hurt himself. Okay. Yeah, you've saved a life. I was at uh, Kevin and Bean doing the morning show a million years ago, like right when I first started, like like 94. And uh, Tori Amos showed up, and uh, she's got all her fans. They heard that she was coming to come to Kevin and Bean and whatever, and they brought her a bou- bouquet of flowers. Yeah. And then Tori Amos did her interview, and Tori Amos left. And I spotted the bouquet of flowers. Yeah, she's not going to take them with her. She's she not taking them with her. She's got a long day. I got no money. I'm, I'm getting 50 bucks a bit doing a character. I'm working construction, boxing coach. I got, I got nothing. I'm yeah. driving a truck. I got a girlfriend who loves Story Amos. I take the bouquet. Yeah. I bring the bouquet home right after the show and I present them to my girlfriend. She is wowed and can't believe that I bought her a bouquet of flowers. And then, then you tell the story. I explain oh, no. I did not buy this. Guess whose bouquet this is? Tori Amos. The Tori Amos. Oh, so you worship valuable. at the altar of Tori Amos. She left it behind, and here it is. And she's like, get this shit out of my face. Oh. That's how women roll. Now, look, I, I love Tom Brady, or I love Burt Reynolds, or I don't know who who I love. But if you if something was left behind and it was his, yeah. and then give it, if this was Tom Brady's cordless drill, and now I got it, you get extra you got a kudos. Story. Yeah. You, got a story. you got a story. That. The Tori Amos flower conundrum. That answers yes. every question with a woman. I, I ha- what is different between this bouquet of flowers? The only difference is I didn't pay for them. It wasn't painful for me. I, it didn't, <laughs> diamonds are painful because they're worthless oh, they like the to effort. us they like and the they effort. cost a lot. And someone had to go down a hole. They want guys right. breaking their backs yeah, and yeah. dying for something that's worthless and has no utility except for in an industrial application. I, yesterday was Valentine's Day, and yesterday was also my birthday. My, so, so it's my birthday and it's Valentine's Day. My wife for my birthday took me to an escape room. 
She thought it would be fun. I had a good time. It was all fine. But I went to get her flowers for Valentine's Day and I, I left it too late. I've been busy promoting the special and all that stuff. And so they, they're arriving today. <laughs> Right, the flowers. The flowers. I, I said I, I, I couldn't. Yeah. They, I couldn't get a delivery time for Valentine's Day. Mm. Their arriving day. So I'm the worst in the world now because right. the flowers didn't arrive on that day. She's still getting <laughs> right. the flowers. Yeah. Plus it was my birthday. Give yeah. me a little bit of leeway. Yeah. And the order was placed on time. Like. The order was placed, and I feel like the escape room may have been an afterthought. And she <laughs> might have forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> it's all. Um, it's all effort. Yeah. They like the effort and. If you liked flowers, then there wouldn't be any effort there and they wouldn't be into it. Any A florist well, that's cannot those, bring his those, wife flowers. Those fake flowers, they've never taken off, really. They've tried right. them over the years and they've gotten better and better, the technology. And now there's other ones that will last for like 40 days or 60 days or something. But my wife, being vegan, is very unhappy because obviously there's some chemical sprayed on them to make mm-hmm. them last for 30 days. So that's not a good thing either. She needs to, They have to die quick. They have to live quick. It's a moment in time. I mean, think about a diamond. Yeah. A diamonds could range from, you know, 600 bucks to 6 million bucks, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so what does the individual diamond mean to the individual woman? Well, if the dude works at Burger King and he comes home with a $1,300 diamond, then that woman would be excited because that's eaten up a fair bit of his pay. You could not do that if you were a rich guy. No. You could not come home from, with that. So what is it? Well, it's a, it's some commensurate thing of pain. You you need you need it, it's like when you're rich and you go gamble like it doesn't really mean anything no. anymore. Like you can go play blackjack and bet 40 bucks a hand and lose 800 bucks or something and you just go out to dinner. Like it's not when I was poor and I was making eight bucks an hour, if I lost 50 bucks at a table, yeah, I was dev- devastated. Why? Is it the money? No, it's the pain yeah. that's inflicted. So rich guy can't get small diamond. And that's that's the, how the, you the, know the, the it's pro- more about the bracket than it is about the diamond. The problem with the rich guy diamond as well, it all starts the same. So you buy your wife a nice size diamond, but then you're hanging out with other people who have also got money and their wives have even bigger diamonds. And all of a sudden, the amount yes. of money you've spent is, means nothing because the, you've just met well, a diamond that will dwarf th- your diamond. Think about all the women around the woman who gets the diamond ring. So if you got... If you worked at the Burger King and you got her the $1,300 ring, hmm. all her friends would go like, oh, my God, look at it. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. If you hung out with the people we hang out with yeah. and got your lady a $1,300 ring, all her fucking friends would be, that's bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> so what is it? Yeah, so there's no winning. It's yeah. all based all on your annual income. And, and De Beers what do they reckon that. is three months of your salary? Three months out, Fuck yeah. that. I didn't do that. Fuck that three <laughs> months. Get the fuck out of here. I got fucking bills to pay and shit. I got things to do. Yeah. I, I, I got to retire one day. I didn't fucking take three months. That is De Beers putting no. that campaign out there. And then we all used it like it was some sort of metric standard calculation or something like how many? Well, no, let's see. Name I make one other gift where they take a month salary. I, right. I can't, I've never had a no. gift that's been more than, I've probably had a couple of things, or maybe a couple of grand people who've given me over the, you know, different fun a watch or something, you know? Yeah. But I, I, um, I, I've never been given something's fucking. 30, I, want, I wouldn't even accept it. I want a thirty-one thousand dollar cordless drill, bitch. Yeah, yeah. Turn about as fair play. Yeah, with diamond fucking drill bits. Right, and then she'd go, "What are you gonna do with the third? And I'd go, "What are you gonna do with that fucking stone on your fucking <laughs> and, index finger?" And, and also, I've been mugged before, right? When someone's held me up with a with a flick knife in Sydney, Australia, when I was about. 18 years old, you know, just and they got 40 bucks off me, whatever was in my wallet. Maybe it was more, maybe it was less. And then you you, you see women, just petite, small women walking around town with just 80 grand on yeah. their hand. Why the open. I'm not saying mug women, I'm not saying that, <laughs> but why are you mugging me? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, there's there's easier targets yeah, out there. Gamble if you bug a guy. Yeah. And what did you have? Like a condom on you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, a, I did. I had a condom at about forty to 60, 80 bucks in cr- my wallet. Credit card with a three hundred dollar max. A credit card that I could cancel very quickly. Yes. What are you doing? Yeah. All right. Um, 
I want to talk cars for a second because, oh, we have the De Beers commercial. Oh, yeah, yeah, By yeah, the way, yeah. this is another South African syndicate that's just playing on all the oh, women. Oh, are they, so, are, they got, are they South African? Are they? I they'd think have, so. They'd have blood diamonds at the wazoo, right, wouldn't they? I think they're South African. It's a person mincing on the beach. This is human porn for chicks. Yeah, but like in that in that stage right before you propose, and they know you're going to propose because you sort of chat about it. You mm-hmm. say, "Oh, you know, we can." You like, can't do your shoelaces up. Every time you go down on your knees to do, they get excited. <laughs> yeah, oh, you to, there's like that one month period where you're like, "I can't, I, I can't." No, going stop. on trips. I can't walk across a bridge and momentarily <laughs> stop. Yes. <laughs> That's right. If I I can't take you to Hawaii, I can't no, no. do no, I can't do anything because then you'll be expecting it, and I'm not quite ready. I'll tell you what yeah. you really can't do. Right, you cannot go to your friend's wedding in Santa Barbara. Yeah, if you're at that brink of is he going to propose? Because I had one of those oh, a sure. million years ago. I can't remember which girl I had, but like we went to that wedding in Santa Barbara. Yeah, we. W- Oh, we went out to eat. We had a great time. The ride home's like arms folded, sitting in the passenger seat. <laughs> uh, something wrong? No. Why? You haven't spoken in 80 miles. Yeah. No, I'm fine. So, and I was like, we're just driving home. And I'm like, we, just, we had a great time, cocktails and dinner. Like, a great time. I, we, we didn't argue. It was, it was good. No, I said I was fine. I was like, why are you so pissed off? We, we just had a magical time in San Bart. It was... She was having a good time the whole time. It was the ride home oh, when yeah. she knew there was in. nothing going on in Santa you know, Barbara. You know what will kill you is a, a friend, a couple friend of yours that have been together a shorter amount of time mm. than yes. you have. Oh, they're a nail in the coffin, those <laughs> oh, cats. Yeah. And they, you go to their engagement Thanks, party, guys. you're you're fucking <laughs> the walking dead. Yeah. yeah, no, they need to be surgically removed from your life <laughs> because they're the ones who go fast and you and then they're And you try to make you try to make com- comments, you're like, ah, pick bit soon for yeah. them, anybody. <laughs> They've gone into this a bit like uh, Tammy and Steve met met nine months after we met. Yeah. <laughs> and now we're at their engagement party. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I had a friend who I did that to, and he was I was because I was with my girl a few years, and he was with his about four and a half years. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and then I think they got engaged quite soon afterwards. Yeah, pure he, pressure. He couldn't. What are you going to do? You can't. You can't do anything about it. All right, we uh, we'll take a break. We got cars to talk about. We got news uh, as well. And we got more Jim Jeffries right after this. Well, I want to thank O'Reilly Auto Parts for climbing on board in 2023. You know. I love cars. To me, they're like my children. I'm, I have a truck. I got an SUV. I got sports cars. I got race cars. And they're all cars. That's the key. And if you love cars, then you got to love O'Reilly Auto Parts. It's O Rewards Bonus Points Month at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Shop in store or online to get points and rewards sent straight to your phone or inbox. Get two, three, or even four times bonus points on select purchases to get you to your next reward even faster. Receive a $5 reward for every 150 O Rewards points. If you're already an O Rewards member and not receiving your rewards, just add your email or mobile phone number and get a $10 reward for updating your existing account. Sign up is quick and easy at O'ReillyAuto.com, or you can do it in store. That's O'ReillyAuto.com. A lot of women get very upset when a man my age mentioned Greta Thunberg. And in your brain right now, a little loop's going on, and you're going, how dare you pick on a 16-year-old girl? Who the hell do you think you are? You know what? You're right. That's wrong. But she's 19 now, and I fucking waited. I waited three long years to talk about this shit. I can say whatever the fuck I want about a 19-year-old. Here's one for you. I can fuck Greta Thunberg and I've done nothing wrong. And I wouldn't use a condom either. Out of respect for her and the environment. 
Jim Jeffries is on the Adam Carolla Show. I think that was the closer, right? That was no, no, no that was the opener. There's yeah. an, there's another Greta Thunberg joke to close. Oh, I do a callback. I'm, I have no oh, problem it's with a Greta Thunberg. I have no problem with Greta Thunberg. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> but, that was funny. But it's like it's like she's this untouchable person you can't joke about for some reason. People get very angry. She's angry. Yeah, Boy, she's she angry. A, she seems to be, uh, you know, I just don't quite get the point of her. But I know you're talking about her, people get very, they're very passionate about Greta. Yeah, you're right. Well, like, you're right. Uh, Greta Thunberg, you could have consensual okay. sex with. Here, I can beat off to the Olsen twins guilt free. Uh, it's, it's a new world. But here's the thing with Greta, right? So, what was she like, 16 when she started out? And I should be in school and right. I, you to my generation and all that. Stuff. Okay, and then people go, oh, you can't pick it. You're picking on a 16-year-old girl. I would pick on a 16-year-old boy from Sweden called Lars. Right. Who ca- came in some comfortable shoes with his coiffed blonde hair. Right. And just stood there and went, hey, man, the environment's not working <laughs> out, you know? Like, I really... We'd go, fuck off, Lars. Get the fuck out of here if Lars did it. I Stupid argue Lars. this is this is kind <laughs> of... This is kind of my racial argument, which no one ever really brings up, but... Oh. Um, I argue that if Lars did that, he would be attacked in much greater fashion mm-hmm. than Greta was. Much worse, and he, much wouldn't, worse. he wouldn't be defended. Right. Now, all the feminists would go, oh, if that were a guy. No, no, it's it's the opposite. And my racial... Lars ar- wouldn't get to the UN. If they said right. we have a 16-year-old boy who's passionate about no. the environment and he wants to tell us all off... We'd go, no, we're fucking busy It'd be here. like, get, yeah. get on we're, your fucking scooter and go home. Okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah we're, we're, we're busy. Oh, no, we have a girl. She might have a little bit of autism. and all. There's a lot of things that sort of work, you know what I mean? Yes. And so, so it's like, and she started up a webpage. She's done a few things. Oh, you let her talk. But yeah. like, Lars would have fucking no way in the world, Lars. No way. No Could have pulled that off. <laughs> <laughs> he may have been like pelted with a piece of fruit or something if he even <laughs> tried to float that. Let me get in front of the UN. My uh, my racial equivalent to that is everyone thinks everyone is racist in this country. Um, and there may be some that are. Ah, but I will tell you this. For every one person who's racist, every like white person, there's about 175 that are overcompensating, <laughs> trying to be extra nice to black oh, yeah, people, no, so no, they no. don't think we're amongst the racism, the racists that we're always talking about. You you won't see it in yourself, but like walk around with somebody and just watch them like interact. We will have those friends. Like women do it all the time. Yeah, like yeah. they don't say shit about white women, but when a black woman comes, like, oh, well, girl, your hair looks. Oh my god, where'd yeah. you get your nails done or whatever? You you will see overcompensation do around you, you. Do you think the overcompensation is a good thing, or do you think it's detrimental? It couldn't hurt. Yeah, I think it's a night. I think uh, look, anytime people are trying to be nice, I know. Like, okay, so I play Call of Duty a lot, and if you if you think racism's dead, play it. <laughs> Play yourself a bit of Call yeah. of Duty and just leave the microphones on. Just mm-hmm. leave them on and listen sure. to what people has to say. It's crazy. And it's crazy the level of race and stuff like that. And I always feel like when I hear it, I'm like, fuck, man, this is putting us all back. Yes. It's making it more difficult now because I just want to just be cool and just be cool with people and stuff. And now I, I feel like like when it's happening, I overcompensate. Like hey hey, like the, the black people aren't telling him to shut up. I'm doing it. I'm I'm on <laughs> I'm on Call of Duty. Like, I'm like hey hey, come on. We're all just trying to shoot each other in a friendly game here. No need for that. I become like an old man. No need for that type of talk. Pull yeah. your head in. I think some. NASCAR driver, or country singer, got fucked NASCAR, up. NASCAR, uh, yeah, it was a race car driver. He, he was playing. He was dropped playing an N bomb mm-hmm. in Call of Duty or a video game. So uh, you are correct. How did he get caught? He, he, feels- I think they were live streaming or something. They're like they're like Twitch streaming. Oh, they, 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 oh, they maybe he was doing a racing simulator. I think game. it was an E race. Yeah, yeah. The racism on computer games, but Call of Duty in particular. The other one is not so much. Call of Duty. It sounds like they're just trying to say anything shocking. Not like so just- much for like the Harry Potter vids or whatever those video I, games. I are. had I had a friend and he had another online. He made a few friends online. And uh, one of the friends that he he was uh, he played with, he goes, "Oh, my mate's going to come online and play with us." And his tag name was "Kill All the Juice," right? <laughs> the juice, the juice, right? Because you got to do little things to get the right. name up there, right? Yeah, right. They won't, they and I went, I one. went, I'm not playing with that guy, man. He sounds like a pretty horrible person. Sure. And he's like, "Why? He just doesn't like juice." And I'm like, "Oh no! <laughs> wow! You haven't seen through." <laughs> 
<laughs> the the yeah. very unveiled, <laughs> yeah, like extraordinarily yeah. commonplace. We were uh, we're talking off the air about an Elton John. Event. Oh, I, I, so uh, I went and saw because in my special I talk about Elton John, and then with Elton John, I had a, I had a moment with DJ Qualls, who uh, if you don't know, he's a skinny guy at a movie Road Trip. He was in Hustle and Flow, and he was in my sitcom with me. And me and DJ's DJ's uh, gay, but at this stage he wasn't out of the closet. Yeah, he recently uh, came out. He right? came out at one of my shows when I told this story the first time. So I, t- I won't tell the full story, but I told this story and then he came out and said, because I said it was a friend of mine. I didn't say who it was. If and- I go gay... I- if I go gay, yeah, sure. I would start with DJ Qualls. Yeah. As a kind of a stepping stone. Yeah, yeah. He's, you know what I mean? He's, he's thin and... He's hairless. He's lovable. He's yeah. Yeah, yeah, That's, yeah, yeah. Uh, that could lead me into a full gay lifestyle, but I'd like to sort of pop my behind with DJ. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? DJ, he's a super sweet guy. Yeah. And he's, mm-hmm. fun, he's a good hang. Just putting it out there. He's a good hang. <laughs> so, so Elton John gives this big speech and he uh, like thanking the audience and all this type of stuff and... And uh, and then DJ, D, I said to DJ, I said, I should thank my audience more. I don't thank them enough. And he goes, yeah, but with your fan base, someone would just yell out fag like that, right? right. And he said it. And as he said it, Elton John had stopped talking and he heard the word <laughs> being said, right? Oh, wow. So that's what just but, out but anyway, I just I just went to see Elton John again and he was doing that speech and someone whispered that word in my ear who had obviously seen me do stand-up earlier on, right? And I was like, I'm glad Elton John's career is ending after this. <laughs> 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 because I feel like people will start yelling yeah. it out and it'll be all my fault. Oh. But anyway, so Elton John's on stage, and he there was this guy who was an Australian uh, VJ called um, uh, Molly Meldrum, right? Now, if you want to find the followers, Mo- Molly Meldrum, he was did Top of the Pops or Countdown as the show was in Australia, and he interviewed all the rock stars when they came here, and he's sort of an institution in Australia. Anyway, he's an older gay fella, and he... He, uh, Elton John um, is singing, because uh, I'm a bitch, I'm a bitch, the bitch, is, the back. bitch is back. Right? Right. And, and Molly comes out. Now, this is in Melbourne. There's 80,000 people. They're all losing their shit. Molly's out. No one's seen him forever. He's out, 82 years old, but he looks dead. He looks like a dead individual, like he's not, <laughs> you know. And so Molly comes out, and you'll probably be able to find some footage of this. And I'm in the fourth row, and he drops his pants. Because he, you know, he's old, he's uncancelable, and he's just like, I'll give it a go, right? Whatever, yeah. And everyone says he mooned the crowd, maybe from the camera's angle, not from my angle. I saw an old man's dick just dangling <laughs> wow. and the whole thing. Then he dropped his pants, he danced around a bit, and uh, then he was too old to bend over and get them back up. Now, he's blamed <laughs> it He's blamed it on a wardrobe malfunction, but it wasn't. I watched the whole thing. But it took him... <laughs> It took, the song finished. Molly couldn't pick his pants back up. It took him the entire song to get off the stage. The song, ironically, was "I'm Still Standing." Oh, but, but he says this is a this is a wardrobe malfunction. Yeah, he's got the two carers to. behind him. These oh, two, he's got two handlers. Yeah, two handlers. That's by accident. There he is, old shriveled oh. ass. Yeah, maybe, old a, shriveled. maybe a tramp stamp. Yeah, oh, yeah, he's got one of them. Anyway, he can't get his pants back up. Oh my god! <laughs> and Elton singing, uh, "I'm still standing." No, he, he, oh, he sings the next song, "I'm still standing." He's still singing, "I'm a bitch" right here. But anyway, yeah. now everybody in Australia—not everybody in Australia—yeah, bitch is back. <laughs> anyway, he can't get his pants back up. It's just not happening. <laughs> it's gonna last into oh, the next song. No, the yeah. whole song. The whole song. He doesn't yeah. get it back up. And he's shuffling off. Elton doesn't know. But anyway, so there's been a big out call now to cancel this bloke in Australia. <laughs> oh, it's all over. Yeah. He's a terrible person. He he bared his ass in front of a whole lot of a lot of people, right? Yeah. He's um, trying to get his pants up. I, now, but he I think yeah, you can't get yeah. it back up. Right. I think there's a wonderful thing, a moment in life when you're so old you can't be cancelled, right? Yes. You can only cancel people from jobs that they enjoy. Mm. Right? You can't cancel a person who fucking cleans dishes and say, you can't clean dishes anymore. They'll just go back to cleaning dishes. Yeah. You can cancel Bill Cosby because he wants to do stand-up and you can go, no. You can't right? cancel any blue-collar work whatsoever. No, you can't cancel You could be a mason. You, can't you could be a, you know, a bricklayer or a welder. There's no cancellation of, when of I'm, jobs no one wants. When one day when I become homeless and it could happen, I'm just going to be just... Fucking just laying in my own shit, just going, nice tits, sweetheart. I'll just be like, <laughs> yeah. no one's going to do anything to me. Yeah. And it was it was so brilliant to watch an old man like that, just with his dick and his ass out going, eh, nothing's going to happen. You know, there's two people you can't. So you can't cancel people with blue collar jobs. 
and and or, you know, flipping burgers at McDonald's. You can't cancel those people and you can't can- cancel truly talented people yeah. like Louis C.K. or whatever, like people that are the real deal. Yeah. The ones who get canceled are the talking heads, the host of the entertainment show that anyone could do. That's- Although Billy Bush came back. Yeah, after seven years, yeah. <laughs> it took him. And by the way, Billy Bush didn't do anything. Billy Bush was just he was just there. He was just there. <laughs> he was just in the and vicinity. He got, he got yeah. canceled. And by the way, Billy Bush was just do. All right, we have. He was this trying standard. to egg the guy on. We have a standard. I will. I will say this: we all have had crazy people say stuff to us, and you do with them what you do with the homeless. You know, I mean, the homeless guy comes up and it starts explaining about aliens or what's really going on in Israel. And you go, yeah, yeah, 100 percent. And then you <laughs> leave. Right. You don't sit and, t- and try to talk him out of it. Right. No, no, no. And no. if you had met uh, oh, kill, no, I, kill I, the juice. Yeah. Kill the juice. If you met <laughs> kill the juice at a party and he started explaining you some of his world views. You'd be like, oh, you know what? I'm going to grab another beer, and you'd just walk away. You wouldn't. You probably wouldn't go. What you're saying is wrong. Hold Let's on, bang here. a glass, <laughs> everyone. You need to understand that his opinions. When Donald Trump Trump is bloviating about grabbing snatch, you would just shake your head and laugh, and well, then you would go home is, and say he's a douchebag. Trump didn't get canceled. Billy did. Right. Yeah. It, Billy didn't even do anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can't cancel. You can't cancel blue collar, and you can't count cancel talent like yeah. real talent but talking head shit if you're hosting the bachelor tv series you can get canceled you can cancel it most actors i think well they're all replaceable yeah act- pretty yeah, pretty well pretty yeah. low on the 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 totem pole of talent where uh, i just have a theory that the 12 year olds win oscars <laughs> right. As yeah. soon as you hear that, twelve-year-olds win Oscars. That means that job's bullshit, right? Right. You're like, like, there's no one who can do this podcasting at twelve at a high level. Right. Let alone doing stand-up at a high level. You're right. But at acting, we can look at a twelve-year-old and go, they're really good. Not only are they really good, but they're the best this year. And by the way, <laughs> under twelve. I don't even think they're acting. I think they actually believe it. Oh, yeah, yeah. They just you know, fucking... That yeah. little girl from Megan probably thought there was a robot trying to kill her. Yeah, yeah. I, if I was directing, that's what I would I, say. I, I I've never seen that form. movie, but I get just, the gist. Just, this is real. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. And it's... Start and crying. It's like what Anna Paquin was young and Tatum O'Neill was 12 or something. There's been a few throughout history. Tatum O'Neill may have been the youngest to be nominated at nine for Paper Moon. Yeah, if somebody wants to check that, we have uh, we have the uh, old gay codger uh, in Australia at the Elton John show. Um, mooning? Oh, he's mooning oh, early he's... at an earlier event. Oh, he's, he oh, moves. So it's his thing. It's his thing. <laughs> <laughs> Pull his cock and balls out at an <laughs> event. <laughs> Yeah, wow. What is so special about his ass? <laughs> Rick oh, D's the guy over here, right? <laughs> uh, they, hope- made, they made a mini series out of this guy. It's like it's like have you watched the Jimmy Savile documentary? No, I haven't seen it. Oh, it's on Netflix. It's uh it's bad. It's, you know who Jimmy Savile is? No. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, so Jimmy Savile is this he was this radio DJ and he did Top of the Pops and he looks like a pedophile, right? If you looked at him, you'd go, That's probably a pedophile. Yeah, they have a And because I said something when I first moved to England, I went, That guy creeps me out. He got that pedo fucking and the audience started booing. There he is, right? Mm-hmm. The audience started booing, and I remember thinking, Oh, the British people really love this person. I should shut up. Or maybe right? they love pedophiles. But what happened was he raised tens of millions of pounds to build different hospitals and all that type of stuff and because he raised so much for charity they let him into the hospital and he would um he would rape and molest um kids who were dying of cancer and all this type of stuff he was a bad bad guy but he was on a tv show called jim will fix it and the show was watched by millions of british people it was the highest rated show on tv after school and it was just Kids would write in, I'd like to eat my lunch on a roller coaster. And he'd go, okay, well, let's figure it out. Let's see what we can do for you. You know what I mean? And so he hosted a kid's show and he was a proper full-on wow. ro- wrong'un. If I you watch, watch the documentary, that. it's uh, it's very oh, upsetting. And it's like, it's also, it's like, it, when you watch the documentary, it was pretty clear. Well, yeah. 
Like, he never had a girlfriend. He never had a this. He never had a well, that. He was hugely famous. First indication is any interest at all in any children other than your own. Like, I barely am interested in my own kids. <laughs> well, that's L- what I was thinking less, about. Like, your like, kids there was the kids always, the There was always blokes in the Scoutmasters who didn't have sons, and they were just like, were well, you just concerned about the local youth? Oh, that was and my... And how, how their not, not, um, tying is going? <laughs> I, I, first off, I always had a joke where if I was in charge of the Scoutmasters, I'd be like, all right, who's going to take the kids up to Mount Pinos for three days in camp? And a guy's hand shot up, I'd go, Bert, you're out. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, Why? Your hand flew up immediately i want the guys pissed off that he's missing the playoffs in the nfl yeah, 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 yeah. you steve yeah, no right. come on I'm pa- the packers are my team they're in the playoff you you miserable guy you will not molest any of these kids when i when i was a catholic big brother i showed up to this catholic big brother place and what's just a, like what's a catholic big brother it's just a Mentor, Big Brother program, or whatever they sign you with a kid. Oh, that needs help. I tried to sign up to be a Big Brother one time when I first moved to England, thinking I had all this spare time, and I didn't. <laughs> I didn't qualify. You know what I mean? I was just like a grubby comic, and they're like, "Do you smoke? Do you drink? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was, I'm, mm. I'm yeah, just trying to do like process. some type of charitable thing, and then that, uh, I remember sitting in a room with these dudes. Like I got dragged into it. Mm. I had a friend. Well, actually, uh, Paul Rugg. Not Paul Rudd. Paul Rugg, a voice uh, Animaniacs guy and Freakazoid and all that guy does all those voices. His wife, Maria, worked for the Catholic Big Brothers like at the time. Oh, so you had an in. And and she like said, Come on, you should do this. You should do this. You should do it. And I finally went, Yeah, all right, I'm not doing anything. And I, I showed up at the meeting. And like I was just sitting with dudes and I was like I got dragged into it. So I was like, oh, what are you guys doing here? And the guy next to me just like I'm from Kansas City, and I'm lonely. <laughs> I'd be like, wow, that sounds super creepy to have yeah. a kid assigned to you. But oh, I did it. I, I was going in because I had a couple of friends who worked for the charity, and I thought, oh, but then I didn't. You did the same thing I did. Yeah, yeah. The um, did you Do you remember your kid? Did you yeah, get, Nate. Did, Nate, you're still friends with Nate? No, he, he cut me loose as soon as I became a celebrity. Really? Why? That's that's the best friend to have. <laughs> Famous friend. He get free t-shirts and stuff. I was, we were thick as thieves. He would sleep over. I would take him to the beach. I, I would take him, I had, t- I had Taco Bell's all I could afford back then because you yeah. got to pay for everything. Yeah. But I would pick him up, uh, go buy Taco Bell, go to the beach. I, I didn't have any money. So we just had to do free shit, yeah, you yeah. know. Uh, and eventually he would like, you know, he'd come out to a show at, at the Acme Theater and he'd sleep over and stuff. I mean, not that often, but he'd sort of have slumber parties and shit. And I you took him to Disneyland, Knott's Berry Farm, you know, the Magic Mountain, all this shit. And they'd have Big Brother events, you mm-hmm. know, like a hoedown, barbecue, whatever at the park, you know, and all that shit. And we'd, we'd do all this stuff. And then uh, he... Let's see. Then he got into high school. That's uh, me and oh, Nate. Look how handsome you were. Holy hell. Yeah. Bloody hell, you must have done well. Nah, only with the young... <laughs> Not with the girls. <laughs> I had low self-esteem. But, uh, yeah, this picture of me and Nate. And Nate, uh, Nate got into high school. And Nate, early computer guy. You know, into into computers in uh, you know early nineties, right? And um, nice. and as he got in high school, and he just he he couldn't find a date or girlfriends or anything like that. But he he met a girl online, but she lived in Kentucky, right? And then he would say to me, "Can you drive me to Kentucky?" <laughs> I'll be like, "Man, I can barely get this Zuzu Trooper like over the fucking Coenga Pass without it overheating." He's like, "I'm so in love with this girl," and. I'm Had he love. seen her, or is it just like was, was just, well, yeah. catfishing wasn't a thing? It wasn't back a then, thing. Right? So was, you just, just it, it, it just shows how bad we were. Like desperate society was. There were so many people who met on chat rooms. This is before dating apps. Just the, they liked the way someone typed. Yeah, just text. This was early computer. I mean, this must have been ninety one, ninety two. Right. But he was figuring out the computer. I don't know if there was an internet, but he was on it. You know. 
And I said, no, uh, no. and he said, I've met this girl and I, I love her in Kentucky. And uh, and then I, I talked to her on the phone, but my mom tells me I can't because of long distance oh, charges. And- I used to ring up a girl in Brisbane from Sydney and the phone calls were so expensive. Fuck. I'd put 50 cents into the fucking thing and that would get me enough to go, I love you, I miss you. Yeah. And you'd hear it drop <laughs> into the fucking, and you yeah. go, all right, I'll call her again next week. Oh, I'm yeah. broke. Have all your notes. Oh, yeah, I have Hit a friend up. in San Francisco. I talked to him for 20 minutes. It'd be, Thirty-one dollars oh or something, God. and then you'd hang up and say, "Now it's your turn to call me back." Because anyway, yeah, he said, "I'm in love." <laughs> I felt bad for him. It was the only love of his life. His mom forbade him from talking on the phone with her because he's running up the bill. And so I said, "I'll give you my calling card, my phone calling card that they used to have back in the day." And you can use my calling card. I didn't have it's any like your money. Credits, right? Yeah, you, you can use this. To, to talk to your, your love in Kentucky. That's nice, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I'm getting the bill. So I'm going to know if you're on like a two-hour phone call because I'm getting a bill at the end. And then he worked at like the snack shack in high school, you know. Right, right, and I said, right. now, look, you're going to use this. You use it sparingly. A call her every day, but just talk to her for like three minutes. Tell her you love her and whatever. And then hang up. Use it sparingly. You can use the card. But I'm going to get the bill, and you got to pay me back. You're working in the snack shack. Now, mind you, I'm making 13 bucks an hour teaching boxing. Like I, I, don't, I don't have money. I don't have car insurance at this point. I don't have health insurance. I don't have anything. I'm living in a rented house with three dudes in La Crescenta. So I go, <clears throat> use it sparingly, and I'm going to get the bill. And when I get the bill at the end of the month, we're going to carve out the Kentucky payments, and then you're going to pay me back out of the snack shack money you're making at school and he goes okay and i mean really use it sparingly it's okay i know what he's saying <laughs> you know what he's saying and i said listen <laughs> you if i get that bill at the end of the month it's a 225 bucks i'm taking that fucking card back from you don't do it and he goes okay uh three days later my phone gets shut off <laughs> shut up <laughs> they just shut it i, I didn't i, I, no I didn't get a warning i didn't get nothing my uh, home phone was all i had i didn't have a cell phone shut I'm like, what the fuck? I had to go oh. in person. Yeah, you couldn't call it. I had to go down to Van Nuys or whatever with my checking account. It's like, you owe us $482 oh for God. like three days. How, like, how many what? hours and hours? I was like, oh, just, what the fuck? And they're like, you blew up your calling card, man. And I'm like, oh, God damn. I, this is on me. I should have known. Young love. And then. Oh, did you tell him off? You must have gotten into him. I, I just said, you're going to have to pay me back. I don't care if it's 20 bucks a year, but you're going to have to pay me back for this. I, I gave him 400 bucks I didn't have to get my phone turned back on again. I was flat busted. Hmm. And, uh, and then he got to like 18 or something. And they were like, everyone was talking about college. You know, this was like 1993, 94. And I was like, Nate, you're a shit student. I'm a shit student. You're just not a good student. He was a shit student in high school. I said, you know computers. Computers. This is the future. Yeah, that. This is what you should be working on. I, you're going to go to some junior college for two years and waste your fucking time and try to transfer to UC whatever. It, it's a fuck it. You know computers. You're a shit student. Drill down on the computers. And everyone looked at me like I was a maniac. Why aren't you encouraging him? Did you go to God? I said, he's a shit student. He loves computers. And he's going to be early money on these things because they're going to take over the world and he's going to know how to do the coding and everything like that. And then I became a celebrity and I never spoke to him again. And now he owns Apple. Yeah. Well, and maybe, that's, that's all we got. I know. we. But he never went on with the computing? I want to know what happened with I the computing. I think he did. I think he's, he did. I hope so. I think, I think with it, like education. So I look at my, my son going to private school and sort of stuff, right? It's like 40 grand a year. And then you got to, I, I'm doing it all the way from kindergarten to 12. And then if I pay for college, at the end of the day, what am I like paying for university? At the end of the day, what, a million bucks or something? Yeah. Like it's, it's a lot of money. Yeah. Right. Wouldn't it be better just to put your child through a state school and have a million dollars sitting there and then just wait until they have a good business idea? Yes. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> yeah. It's an investment. Now. Yeah, wouldn't, you, wouldn't that like that money do more doing that? I think so. All right. I agree. We should do a little news oh, before sure, our yeah. time is up here. 
All yeah, right. we, well, someone will find Nate one day. I think it, I think he may have visited me years later at the Man Show. I have a recollection of that. I think he's ducking you because he owes you money. But with he's interest. never. Yeah, he is call, never. Call off the debt, man. Contact. <laughs> Ten minutes after I was his big brother, I was on TV every single night, and he's never reached out to me again. He is not a brown noser, that kid. I know. Well, that so shows integrity that he didn't come after the fame. But call off the debt, man. Say that you're all clean. Yeah. The Nate might be listening. He'll have a friend of a friend and go, you don't have to keep keep dodging him. Well, not only am I not calling off the debt, <laughs> but at 9% interest compounded yearly over the last 27 oh, no. years. Oh, he owes you about, <laughs> he owes he owes you about 10 grand. At least. All right, go ahead, yeah. Chris. Well, let's. Uh, I have a new story out of Australia. Well, kind of, right? So, sure. Uh, one of the most prestigious porn stars today is a porn star named Angela White. Yeah, Angela White's uh, from Australia. Australian porn star. Yeah. Huge. Um, so she's a, she's a thicker girl. If you're into the yeah yeah, yeah bigger. And uh, well, it just came out that she nearly died while filming a, a sex scene. With a co-star named Kieran Lee, so Lee is a popular British adult performer, and they had a sex scene in 2013, and he just did an interview where he said that she, uh, her appendix burst after filming an hour-long sex scene, and they say I'd like to, I'd like to have one of those on my resume. Yeah, yeah but is that just bad timing? <laughs> Were her appendix going to burst anyway? That's well, what you would think. No, and- I'm sure, but I still would like to say that I. Fuck yeah. the appendix out of some chick. Yeah, I, I sort of I put that up there with like yeah. killing a man with my hands. You know what I mean? That's a feather. In I, Nevada. I never, I never watch her, and I tell you, I tell you why, right? Okay. Because the accent, I, I don't. <laughs> I, I, I will give this. I, I shit on America all the time. I shit on wherever I'm living. Right? I used to shit on yeah. wherever I'm living. Love you it. know, you make observations about your space around you. Right. But I will give this to the Americans. Best porn. I like I like oh, an American right. accent. I like a girl to go, oh, yeah, that's great. Keep going. Keep going. And I don't want to hear a girl go, oh, good. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's good. And I don't want like a British one because it's always very working class British and it's just a little bit like, oh, she needs the money. Where like Ameri- <laughs> where, where, where American, I sort of feel like, ah, this is a person who's chose to be here and they might be enjoying themselves. Eastern European, I don't. I, I used to watch that sex, but now with the wars, oh, oh yeah, the Ukraine, is, yeah, 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 I don't, it again, huh? yeah, it ruins it, ruins no, it. There's, I, there's desperate situations going on there, so I've stopped watching. Maybe I should be supporting it and trying to help these people oh, out. That's right, yeah. But I don't. I've given there. up on the Eastern European porn. I like American. Definitely don't watch Australian. <laughs> I've never even looked for Australian porn. She's the one. She's our biggest one. She's like the top one of the top five porn stars in the world. But, yeah. Uh, she's uh, she's the one that's uh, that, that's gone through the ranks. There was another girl called Kelly Surfer. Kelly Surfer. Kelly Surfer. Surfer. Yeah, Surfer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, she she was there. And uh, and the Angela Angela White, they're out. They're the Australian birds have done. There's probably a couple of Australian blokes, but the best thing for men in porn is just shut up and yeah. just 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 be a product of an object. Yeah. Angela White is a three time female performer of the year. From, uh, AM, AVN. I, I got women. asked to host the AVNs three times, and I turned it down. And I, I was just like, I don't know. Can't do it. I don't know. I don't know. It felt like. And I know a lot of good comics have done yeah. it. And uh, but I just I hosted an award show once early on in my career. It was really a, a thankless task, <laughs> and I thought I don't want to do that in front of porn stars. And also, I think at the time I had a girlfriend or something like that. If I was single, uh, maybe. And also, you, you know, you want Greg Fitzsimmons to get some work. I right? Greg do I mean, it. He, he's done it a few times. You yeah. can't just monopolize all the award shows. <laughs> well, all right. Well, what so, else? Well, yeah. Lee, the guy, the guy in the scene, he has a nine and a half inch penis. Mm-hmm. Reportedly insured for a million dollars. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's the one who broke the opinion. Yeah. So. See, this is the thing with big dicks. How big do you want to have your dick before it gets a little bit silly? Mm-hmm. Right. I don't know the exact length of my dick, but I know it's it's my it's it's my iPhone <laughs> plus iPhone. plus a head. <laughs> really? <laughs> Because I'm always what, what holding number the, iPhone are we holding, talking that's about? That's just a regular phone. It's just the head yeah, of me. Oh, you're pro. always holding it by your dick. Yeah, I'm always holding it, and then it's such an easy sort of like I, I think these are five and a half inches uh, phone or something, and then yeah. I've got the head of me dick above it. So that's a case too. Yeah, I'll tell you how much dick is a good amount of dick. Right, <laughs> it's amount of dick that I I would wish to have. Yeah, where you could 
grab it with your fist at the base yeah. and still have some to work with. Yeah. You know what I mean? A little guiding. You know, you don't need another four inches hanging out, but two and a half, you know, three, yeah. you know, you go to full fist at the base and kind of guide it. And you no, know? Another one, like reverse cowgirl is like this position we ne- you never do. And if, you've got a, right. you, if you haven't got a massive dick, it's just they're, 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 they're backwards – they're going like that. Your dick's bending in the wrong direction. Yeah, You're going away dangerous. from the G spot. It's the most injuries. Yeah. And it falls out. And I'm always thumbing it back in. It's probably <laughs> actually more dangerous than the actual rodeo is. Oh, yeah. There's probably more <laughs> reverse cowgirl <laughs> injuries than there are on the circuit. Yeah, that is the number Ask one. any emergency room doctor. Yeah. He'll tell that's, you. That's the number one that will break your dick is the reverse cowgirl. Well, I'd simply go to the guy who ran the ER and go, how many guys have you seen this month who've fallen off a horse? And he'd go, nobody. And I'd go, how many cock injuries from reverse cowgirl? And he'd go, dozens. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon that's your number one injury. I've never had a huge sex injury. Mm. I think I've not a huge one. I don't think I've broken anything. Yeah, I'll tell you something. Funny. My father, this is just injuries. My father is, is goes up on the roof all the time. I've never been on the roof of my house, right? But he's always on the roof doing something, coding it or something like that. But he sent me a text from Australia the other day, just direct to me. I've got brothers in Australia, but he sent a text to me, and the text read like this: "I'm going up on the roof." If I don't call you back in an hour, that means I've fallen off. Mm. Like that was his safety plan. <laughs> that was his safety plan to find out, like, if he falls and breaks his neck, if, if no one calls in an hour, I'm meant to call the equivalent of 911 in Australia, which is triple zero, fr- here from America to send someone to go over to my dad's oh, house because he's dead. Right. If you don't hear from This me. isn't a good system. No, it's terrible. Just ask the next door neighbor or something. You got forget. mates. You got yeah. mates. Plus, if you fall immediately, 57 minutes uh. minutes of you in anguish with a compound <laughs> fracture before yeah. you pick up the phone. Where's the neighbor? Right. I mean, let's do the math. He could fall off the ladder on the way up the roof. But also, I'm not going to call directly on the hour. I'm going to wait a couple of hours because he might have forgotten. He's an right. old fee. He might have forgotten. Had a buffer. Plus, yeah. what's the conversation like with the operator of the emergency? You yeah. know what I mean? Like, well, where are you I'm, calling from? I'm calling from Calabasas. <laughs> I'm calling How the fuck from, do you know what's going on in Sydney? <laughs> I'm calling from California, and I believe my dad's had an injury on the roof of his what house. What time is it over there? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's four and in the all, morning. And also, it's triple zero. I can't ring the emergency line. I can't put the Australian area code and then put the... I don't think so anyway. I, I think I'd have to just call regular... Hospitals. I, I can't. Yeah, I don't it's know. called a regular line. Yeah, I, I know it's an I, emergency. I don't know. Meanwhile, I, your dad's bleeding out, cursing you. Yeah. What I would do is I'd ring one of my friends who live in Australia, tell them to ring triple zero to send someone, or if someone's close to my dad, I'll make them drive over. There's a whole whole thing to do. And yeah. what's he doing up there? He's always up there. If you if you haven't really spent much time or any time on a roof, you've had a good life. Yeah. Because roofs are... I pay for people to get on the roof. You're working up there, you're cleaning the gutters, or you have a horrible stepdad who's molesting you and you're sneaking out of your window at night. Any roof... (laughs) Well, I believe... Roofs are a bad life. I believe my father was on the roof to get away from my mother. That's why he stayed Ah. up there so long. But then my mother died and he still kept his roof activities up. So there's something more to it. Maybe seeing another woman up there. Yeah. (laughs) My my dad's going on a date. He's he's going on his first date in three years and he rings me up and he he, he tells me a name uh, he goes remember mrs blah 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 right and i go yes because i won't say the name but i go yes i remember her and he goes well her husband's dead wow <laughs> and that he was now. he was mates with him you see what i mean and that's how that's his dating circle because he doesn't have the apps anymore now he's trying to call up all of his Son, mates yeah and the it, real and it, reason i call yeah people he hasn't we're called thinking about like, going reverse cowgirl yeah, people, and I, i'm gonna need you if i break my <laughs> cock if you don't hear from me in an hour that means i have a broken dick and i need you to alert the australian authorities <laughs> like maybe he just called you for everything yeah. i'm getting in my car if you don't hear me in an hour that means i got in an accident dad i'm on stage i don't care boy yeah cut the show short you gotta bloody check on me yeah yeah so he's dating his his mates and he, he rang a few of them up right he rings them up and he goes he rings them up hadn't talked to him for five years and he's like gavin oh he answered what, are, what right. are you calling about nothing i guess <laughs> i gotta go work on some shingles yeah <laughs> 
Well, it's just a steel roof. It was like, a, like I think he coats it all the time, or it's, oh, a, it's yeah. like whatever. He's always it's up. Always there. Something but he's eighty three. Wow. I feel like you can ride this roof out now. That's right. He should yeah. ride it out. Yeah. yeah you so they literally, injuries. when you put a roof on, they'll go, you want a 20-year roof, a 30-year roof, or a 50-year roof. Like, they'll do it. And so if you're 83 and you got a 30-year roof, but it was put on seven years ago, yeah. then fuck it. Yeah. Yeah. Just You're, you're just using buckets. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, in, okay. If there's a problem. You're fine. All right, Chris. What else? All right. So um, a man was convicted in the UK of stealing Tens of thousands, or actually about 200,000 Cadbury cream eggs. Oh, yeah. So, I love me a Cadbury cream egg, but I don't like the American ones because you use the, they, they get Hershey's to make them and the chocolate's yeah. a little bit different. Oh, really? Angry. Cadbury's my chocolate of choice, right? Ah, I, I, and I. Because you spent, you spent some time with Well, they have it in right? Australia as well okay. and they have it in the UK. In Ca- Cadbury's Australia is made in Tasmania. It's like the one factory they have down there that they're very passionate about. But Cadbury's. Australia, there's one ingredient different. Some emulsifier is slightly different, so it melts slower in Australia because of the heat, but it t- oh. tastes the same. It's like then, we like Mexican Coke better, right? Yeah. And then they've got the Cadbury's over here, which is just Hershey's repackaged, and it's shit. And it's not good, and there's corn syrup and shit mm. in it. And it's I, not good. I think I found out yesterday that the first company to start giving chocolates for Valentine's Day was Cadbury. Oh, it's they, they, oh, they, they invented. Of, they invented. Well, you know it. what I like about Cadbury's? It's no nonsense chocolate. Their, their slogan is a, 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 a glass and a half of full cream dairy milk. And it just has. And it just the logo is just like a glass and a half of milk being poured into a pot, right? Mm-hmm. And they're like, "We're Cadbury's. Yeah, that's enjoy it. it. You know, but then you get like you. Lindor and Lint and all these type of stuff. And they, and they start anytime a company starts using the word artisan. I'm like, uh, what yeah. the fuck does that mean? Yeah, I yeah. make an artisan something. It's like, is it bread or not, man? You know what I mean. So, so I, I Cadbury's is me me chocolate of choice. I order it in. That's all I, I. And for my birthday, that's what my wife gave me was a whole lot of slabs of Cadbury's and a fucking uh, escape room. Hey. <laughs> I can't, I can't that's be a, unhappy with that's that. A woman, yeah, <laughs> yeah, just sit in your den. Eat Cadbury and get so fat you can't escape through the door. Yeah, yeah. Cad- exactly. Cadbury made the first heart-shaped box of chocolates in 1868. Wow. The thing that was Pioneers. weird is I was literally doing a game show yesterday, and this was one of the questions. Well, there's a documentary about Cadbury's coming out where they might use a bit of uh, child labor to pick the cocoa beans. Oh, it like um, rooted all the way back, just the harvesting of the beans. The harvesting of the beans. And so it was like this was in England. I was in England at the time, and they were like, Cadbury's, Easter's coming up, blah, da, 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 da. Oh, yeah. Can you ethically eat Cadbury's anymore? I'm like, I don't want to fucking see how the sausage is made. Right. Yeah. Same I'll thing sit with there. coffee. It's- yeah, I sit there on my Apple computer in my Nike shoes eating me Cadbury's because it's like, <laughs> what, what am I meant to do? This yeah, is online the- looking up a blood diamond for your old lady. <laughs> <laughs> like, this eating is jerky. Up, this is up to them to change their practices. It's not me. Me not buying a block of chocolate. I know if everyone does it, it will change. But I assume all chocolate has a dark something or other. Yeah, they have a, a name a for it. Thing. What? Dark chocolate. Dark chocolate. Oh. Yeah, the worst chocolate <laughs> of it all. Yeah, milk chocolate's good. And then yeah. dark chocolate's like, what the fuck are we doing here? Like, are we having a dessert or not? <laughs> yeah, I know. And then, like, my wife is like, I, right. I prefer dark chocolate. Oh. I'm like, fuck off. Fuck off to all the <laughs> fucking people. Because you don't know, women do this a lot. Yeah. I got into this recently, which is on my rider backstage, they always have a thing of nuts, yeah. a thing of this, thing of that. They give a huge sack of nuts unsalted and i'm like oh fuck because it always says in small print unsalted mm. like, mix nuts and big you know yeah, yeah. and neon and then unsalted like a little and then i did the oh, fuck i hate unsalted and of course the person next to me i like them unsalted and i'm like yeah, really. nobody likes unsalted nuts more but i get where you're heading here which is you're just disagreeing because yeah, yeah. nobody likes dark chocolate dark chocolate char- Chocolate is a lot healthier, yeah, I mean, and you're better off eating it from a dietary standpoint. But when you go for that C's box of chocolates, you yeah. go for all the light skinned ones first. <laughs> That's yeah, what yeah, I yeah, do. Yeah. No, I don't no, want... The dark ones are sitting there. At the They're end. sitting there at the end. They're you will get to them, but I, first I with have, the light. I have skin. a C's chocolate story. I haven't heard anyone bring it. My mother loved. My mother was morbidly obese, lady, about three hundred pounds, great big lady. Oh. 
And oh, yeah. wow! <laughs> and she that. had a passion for the strawberry creams from uh, Seas Jeez, chocolates. Yeah. But I think her passion really came from the same thing we were saying with the diamonds and all that stuff. She liked that I had to bring them back from America and transport them, and then they came because they wouldn't deliver them and all that type of stuff. And so my mother was also an insulin dependent diabetic. And so I was like, you can't have seized chocolates. I'm not bringing, I'm not bringing heroin to a heroin right, addict. Right? Right now. You're morbidly obese. I can't bring you, like, and she was like, I've ordered seven boxes of the strawberry creams, and you can just put them at the bottom of your suitcase. They won't take up any space. And <laughs> they like, have the store at the airport yeah, and, now. And I'm like, I don't, I don't want to carry boxes of chocolates back to a morbidly obese diabetic. Call me old-fashioned. I'm just <laughs> trying to make you live a little bit longer. So yeah. she rang up my ex when she was pregnant. Did you hear your dad in the back yelling, bring the chocolates, boy. I got to make a phone call. Yeah, yeah. Going on down there. If you're not here in an hour, if you don't hear from me about the chocolates in an hour, <laughs> ring up the emergency. So, so she rang up She rang up my um, my girlfriend at the time, who was incidentally pregnant, but she didn't know that, but my, pregnant with my first kid. She rang up my girlfriend, who she'd never met, who was going to Australia and said, oh, and she was living with me. She's like, I'm sending over some chocolates. Don't tell Jim I've sent the chocolates. And if you can just carry them home secretly oh and he can't know wow. and so my girlfriend was panicking and she's like she's like i need to speak to you about something and i don't know and i'm like oh has she gone through my history am i in a bit of trouble right. here you know what i mean <laughs> like what's going on here she goes i need it she goes your mum sent and she opens this cup there's this whole big pile oh of God. chocolates right so i said i said all right right i rang up i said you're not getting fucking chocolates and don't try to work around it. if you want them go pay for them and pay for them to be delivered like everybody buddy else who wants them right so i rang up my brother and I said, uh, I said, oh, I said, Mum asked for these chocolates, blah, 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 blah. And then he goes, you know what we should do? He goes, we should deliver her a thousand of them so she can never get through them. <laughs> and she'll have to, like, a, like a pallet, yeah. like a pallet that just has to show up. When you like, have the kids smoke a whole pack of yeah, 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 like that. Yeah, so yeah, like, 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 And just write in the card, there's your chocolates. Right? Yeah. That's what we're going to write. Go. Right? So my brother rings up. My brother, he had, like, like at this stage, he had a lot more money than me. He had a bit of money. He goes, don't worry, I'll pay for it. We'll do it, right? So he rings up, uh, sees chocolates. Uh, he puts in the order. And all, no, he puts in the order online. Right? Ship it out to Australia, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, C's rings him up and goes, we've never had an order of C's chocolates in Australia that's been more than two boxes. What's going on? Oh, <laughs> thinks he's like bootlegging them, yeah. like a distributor. Yeah, but he thinks yeah, he's either distributing them or he's playing a prank on like like it's a stolen credit card yeah, or something. Yeah, flagged. And so you know what the lie he came up with? He said, oh, look, my mother was a big fan of your chocolates and she's very popular with it and she's just passed away. And at her funeral, we're going to give one, every, we're going to give one <laughs> strawberry cream wow. to everyone who comes and we're all going to eat them in unison. And then they went, oh, okay. And then they rang back and went, nah, it's just too weird. <laughs> they go, they go, we can send her six boxes. And I remember my brother saying this. He goes, you can't do that. She'll enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that funny and happy or semi-sad note, <laughs> very sad. So. Jim's got to call his dad because if he doesn't hear back. It's been an him, hour. It's, it's been, been a, too long. It's been an hour since he's been on this uh, <laughs> show, and he's... his dad is starting to worry. Uh, high and dry, great special. Yes. We've all seen it here. Oh, well done. Hit it out of the ballpark, my friend. It's streaming now on Netflix. He's got live dates coming up all over the place, and you can shoot him at. Instagram or tweet at Jim Jeffries as well, or go to jimjeffries.com for all the live. Yeah, dance, I'm, right, I'm, about, I'm about to tour the UK and all of Europe for the next couple, a few months. Go out and see a very funny comedian in Jim Jeffries. And always good to have you back on the show, my friend. Thanks, I'm going to be at McGooby's uh, tonight in Baltimore. And tomorrow, the first two shows are sold out, but the late shows, maybe some tickets left. And then I'm going all over. So just go to adamcrawl.com. And until next time, it's Adam Carolla for Jim Jeffries and Chris Max Pat is saying, Mahalo. Mahalo.